Being familiar with 3D printing, I've grown used to having to wait several hours for a part to be completed. But with this super cheap upgrade, which is in fact a mellow volcano heater block, we can cut down print time significantly and even more with some tuning. Hey everyone, I'm Tommy and today we're going to be taking a closer look at the mellow volcano heater block. What makes this heater block different is its size. It's slightly longer than a standard V6 or Creality hotend and the heater cartridge is mounted vertically rather than horizontally. Installation on most printers is quite simple. You just unscrew the previous heater block and screw on the new one. Make sure to adjust your Z offset of course as the increased length of the block will require you to adjust your Z limit switch or leveling probe to avoid having a bad time. Then it's time to install your thermistor and heater cartridge. Now, depending on what printer you are using, your thermistor might not be directly compatible. Luckily, Mellow does supply different volcano blocks for different thermistors, depending on which one will work best with your machine. I should have gone with the glass thermistor variant, but I didn't realise this at the time. This wasn't a big issue however, as the thermistor could still be inserted, it just wasn't as secure. You may be required to do a PID tune once you install the heater block. I found that I didn't need to, but I'm told that a good tune can increase print quality and stabilise temperatures. I'll link a video and article on how to PID tune in the description. It only takes a few minutes as well. With everything leveled and installed, it's time to do an extrusion test. I'll be using the flow test generator as seen in my previous video and in CNC Kitchen's hot end benchmark video. The G-code created from the generator instructs the printer to extrude a certain amount of filament at various speeds, which we weigh to calculate the under extrusion amount. Here are the benchmark results at 200, 215 and 230 degrees Celsius. At 200 degrees, we can see that the results start to vary at around 20 cubic millimetres before dropping sharply at 24. By bumping up the temperatures, we can see that the hot end is able to handle the higher flow rates a bit better, but it still begins to under extrude at around 26 cubic millimetres, although not as much as before. These are some pretty good results, so let's apply them in the slicer. How we can do this is by tweaking our print speed settings so that the maximum flow rate achieved during the printing of a part is the same as the maximum flow rate our hot end can achieve stably. In Super Slicer, this can be done quite simply by typing in the value. If we now slice the part without any changes, we can see that it will take 14 hours, but by adjusting some settings such as layer height and actual print speed, we can achieve a time of 6 hours while still not pushing our machine to its limits. This is a huge improvement in time, but this is only with some basic changes to the layer height and infill among other things. By following some slicer tutorials online, you can reduce your print time even more and once again, by using a Raspberry Pi and Clipper, you can enhance your printer to the next level with advanced features such as input shaping while increasing print quality and speed once again. So that concludes my review of the Mellow Volcano heater block. I really enjoyed making this video as I got to try new methods of testing and filming. So maybe that's worth subscribing for if you haven't already. I will continue to improve in each video as that is my goal. So as I always say, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon.